Hey Nathan, it's Wednesday, March 25th. So you and I love science, especially space science and the possibilities of space exploration. I love space because its vastness reminds me that there is so much more going on than what is happening here on our tiny little planet. It's very humbling. And to imagine that we could one day expand our little species out into the universe is almost an incomprehensible idea to fathom. That was one reason why you and I got so excited when we first heard about the Mars One mission. If any of you Narwhals are unfamiliar, Mars One is a nonprofit organization that plans on starting the first human colony on Mars. The company is based in the Netherlands and is run by Boss Lonsdorp. Now I love the idea of a nonprofit organization getting enough money and people to start permanent human living on Mars. To me, the idea of human life living anywhere but here is still like super futuristic sounding, but to Lonsdorp, it's much more feasible much sooner. Like in 12 years. 12 years? Is that even possible? Like, it seems like a miracle that we were able to land rovers over there, let alone human beings. But. You know, I guess we've landed on a comet now, so it could probably work. Anyway, to get candidates for living out the rest of their lives on Mars, Mars One opened an application process and accepted applications from people all around the world and then started their selection process. One accepted applicant, astrophysicist Joseph Roche, was excited about talk of establishing a permanent settlement on Mars. He applied partially just out of curiosity, but also because he really enjoyed the ambitiousness of the Mars One mission. However, he has spoken out recently against the feasibility of the project. He believes the Mars One management team, Lonsdorp included, um, has a certain naivety when it comes to the success of the technology and of the psychological capabilities of the candidates. He feels that the selection process for the applicants hasn't been rigorous enough for the expected outcome of living forever on a not life friendly planet. Which when you put it that way, it makes sense that we should have some reservations about the project. He also claims that the selection process has favored people based on how much money they've donated to the project and not how fit they would actually be for the mission. All in all, he loves that the mission has sparked interest and conversation in the general public about space exploration, but he believes that it is totally impossible. Boss Lonsdorp then responded to the criticisms made by Roche and others in the scientific community, saying that he and the Mars One team welcome any and all criticisms as it only helps them fine tune their plans further. He discredited most of the facts that were reported by Roche's interviewer, saying that they were just completely false. When it comes to the psychological readiness of the candidates, Lonsdorp assures that they are far from done with this selection process. He plans on getting the candidates together and assessing them through team and individual challenges with a larger selection committee and more intense interviews. These processes are being led by Norbert Kraft, the chief medical officer of Mars One, who has a lot of experience in the psychological and physiological effects of long-term spaceflight. For the technology aspect, Lonsdorp says they've spoken with many established aerospace companies and that they have on their team very experienced people in the field of space exploration and technology. So when it comes down to it, Lonsdorp could just totally be lying or Roche could just not know as much about the selection process and the future of that process and the preparation for the would-be colonists. For what it's worth, Lonsdorp takes the criticism in stride, maintaining a very confident optimism. The first mission, an unmanned one, is scheduled for 2020, with the first human colonists touching down in 2027. So I guess to know if it's really possible or not, we'll just have to wait and see. I for one attribute to Lonsdorp's optimism, but at the same time, Time, I would totally believe it if it turns out that this mission is just 100% impossible. It just seems too good to be true, but maybe it's time and maybe to get to Mars we just need this energetic drive of Lonsdorp to just really push us there. Oh, and did I mention that the mission hopes to be partially or even mostly funded by it becoming a reality show? What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments and Nathan, we'll see you on Friday.